So this is what they do to you when you get 100,000 subscribers, huh? They didn't prepare me for this. Ugh, how could this have happened? Math content isn't supposed to get this kind of following. Eh, uh, well, I guess we better get on with it. When did you start liking math? I remember liking math, or at least being decently good at it, when I was in elementary school. Though I had a bit of a falling out with it in middle and most of high school, until I hit calculus senior year. Where, kind of against my will, I got sucked down the rabbit hole that it is. I found the clever techniques of calculus and what they could do really fascinating. It was suddenly possible to solve all sorts of problems I thought way beyond what I could do. Like finding the volumes of curvy solids, or deriving the classic area and volume formulas of geometry. I was also taking physics at the time, so that further fueled the calculus addiction a bit, with the wonderful applications of it you find there. Calculus is quite the power trip. Though sooner or later you get snapped back to reality when you take a differential equations class and realize just how many things you can't solve in closed form with it. How do you find the problems you talk about in your videos? They come from various sources. Many of them are just topics I encountered during my time in school that I thought were interesting or confusing. Like the Riemann series theorem or the topological definition of connectedness. Other times I choose topics that I feel are little known or misunderstood. The videos on infinity and complex numbers might be examples. And of course, sometimes it's just when I discover something really cool and just want to share it. Like the weird wheels or the 3D Euler's formula. Also keep in mind that I only make videos on topics that I feel I understand decently well. Sometimes there's a topic I'd really like to cover, but don't, because I realize I don't have enough knowledge to do it justice. Obviously that's a great motivation for me to go out and actually learn something new, but if I'm honest, I do tend to gravitate toward making videos on things I'm either already comfortable with, or wouldn't take too much work to get up to speed on. But on the other hand, many of the most rewarding videos I've made have been ones where I got excited from learning new things, so it is definitely worth it. But on the topic of the effort needed to make videos, here's a good question. Which of your videos was most difficult to make? It's a tough question because different videos are hard to make for different reasons. I think the wheel videos required the most work to animate, though the one that required the most research beforehand was probably the fractional calculus video. In general, I think research and script writing is the most stressful or anxiety-producing part of the process, as it's the hardest to predict or control. Sometimes it's easy and I crank out a script in a day or so. Other times it takes weeks or even a month or more. Animation, by contrast, while it takes a lot of hours, is pretty straightforward. Just turn the crank until they're all done. Plus, it's fun to see the videos start coming to life. Any favorite philosopher? If only vaguely, what fields or topics of math interest you the most, and talk about them either online or in real life? Hmm, I don't think I have a favorite philosopher. I'll have to think about that. As for topics that interest me, no surprise, they're often related to the ones I've made videos on. But in general, I tend to gravitate toward anything calculus, geometry, topology, or analysis flavored, with an especial fondness for anything complex number related. I also have an unhealthy interest in big numbers and infinity, which drives my dad, an engineer, crazy whenever I bring it up. How do you make your animations? This is a very common question I get. I actually use my own homemade Python library called Morpho to make pretty much all the animations. Contrary to what some of you might expect, it's actually not related to Manum, the Python library used by 3Blue1Brown and many others to make math animations. It's a project I developed independently, originally just to create some grid morphing animations. But over time, it, uh, morphed into a much larger piece of software than I intended. Actually, when I was originally toying with the idea of posting animated math videos to YouTube, I thought I'd use traditional animation software for most of it, and only use Morpho for certain specialized animations. But at a certain point, I realized, much to my own surprise, that Morpho had become robust enough to actually carry the whole show. That's still wild to me. Though to be clear, I only use Morpho for the animations. All the audio and video editing are handled using traditional software. In my case, Audacity and HitFilm Express. But I also want to emphasize that you really don't need a fancy animation tool like Morpho or Manum to make engaging math videos. This might be a good time to answer the next question. 
Any tips for people starting out on doing animations for math explainers? E.g. good tools and libraries, common pitfalls, etc.? Like I said, I don't want anyone to think that you have to use a certain fancy programming tool to make compelling animations. I think you'd be surprised at how far you can get with more straightforward tools like Desmos, GeoGebra, or even humble old PowerPoint. Case in point, the YouTuber Mathemaniac actually uses GeoGebra and PowerPoint to make most of his videos and they look great. That said, if you want to go the fancy programming route, Manum is kind of the standard go-to option these days for making high-quality math animations. And for good reason. It's very powerful, and there's a lot of online resources out there, as well as a community, to help you learn how to use it. You're also welcome to try my software, Morpho, if you want, though it's still largely a personal project, and therefore the documentation resources for it are a little sparse. Another programming option that looks promising is a tool called Motion Canvas. Though I haven't tried it myself, and so can't speak much about it, but I think it's worth checking out. I'll leave links to all of these resources in the description. In the end, I think the most important thing if you're just starting out is to pick something you're comfortable with. You want to have fun making animations, and you won't if you're constantly fighting a tool that you don't get along with. Oh, and also, keep in mind that animation, of all types really, always takes way longer to make than you'd think. When watching a video, animations come and go so fast, and, hopefully, seamlessly, that they may feel kind of effortless. But they're not. Even some fairly simple animations can take unexpectedly long to make, even after you're experienced. So if you're going to make animations for any kind of project, be sure you budget the time for it, or you'll get very discouraged when it takes longer than you thought. No matter what you do, animation always takes forever. Okay, that was a bit of a long-winded answer, and we've been at this a while anyway, so I think I'll answer just a few more questions as part of the lightning round. What is your educational background? I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in math, the first from the University of Texas at Austin, and the second from Texas A&M University. For any locals out there, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. How do you pronounce your channel name? Morphocular. Why can't math be easy? Probably because reality in general isn't easy, and it wouldn't be much fun if it was. Okay, but what's 1 plus 1? It's complicated. Read Principia Mathematica. Are you trying to sound like 3 blue 1 brown? Hmm, interesting question. Let's pause and ponder it. Have you ever been told that you sound like, like the conductor Uncle from you sound like Lin Is it just me, or he Why sounds like Larry you sound like Marcus Marcus from Mike Tyson, Tyson Mysteries? It. Um, you're welcome. How much geometric algebra have you done? What is your opinion? And that's all the time we have for today! Thanks for watching! Alright, but in all seriousness, I want to say a big thanks to all of you who have watched these videos and subscribed to the channel. Starting out, I hadn't dared hope to make such a large impact for so many people. I know not many people get this kind of opportunity, and it's a privilege I'm humbled by and grateful for. I'd also like to give another shout out to all those supporting these videos on Patreon. Your support truly means a lot to me, and I try to make sure it all goes toward making the highest quality videos I can. So thanks, all of you, seriously. And if any of you watching feel moved to support what I do here, I'd be honored to have you join in too. I'll leave the link in the description, as always. And with that, I think I'll sign off for now. Take care, and I'll see you all in hopefully many more videos to come. Will you be making any more wheel-related videos? Shh! Spoilers!